Hey everybody, before we get started, I would love to know if you can hear and see us because we've had some technical difficulties. We tried to hook up a new microphone. We meaning we tried to hook up a new microphone and it just for some reason it wasn't working. So we are trying this again, but before we get started and, and talk to you about Killer House, our documentary, we would love to hear if you can see and hear us. And yeah, okay, now we're getting people coming in. Sounds good, Kevin says, sounds good. Thank you so much, Kevin. Kevin is watching on Facebook from Nebraska. Fatima says, hello, thank you, Fatima. Fatima. Hey, Sh yes, and uh, Jane says, much better. Okay, before we get in, as people are jumping in, we're going to talk to you about our documentary. If you wanna check it out, it's at killerhouse.org, killerhouse.org. They say that if you repeat it three times, then people will remember. So I'm going to say killerhouse.org. So hopefully people will remember that. Okay, yes. So we're going to Sorry. No, it was three times. This is actually... It's affecting me. This is a, a very... Oh, I see what you I get it. I you get it. Okay. Three times. Yeah, okay. uh, but today we are going to talk about a serious topic. When I got into the unicorn horse breeding business, I was just a young... Sorry. That's not a different podcast, not the right one. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Hey, Rogers, how are you? Uh, we always love watching where in the world you are watching from. So be sure to write down the city, state, and country. We have people from other countries watching. Wow. Lake Susie. That's a. Lake Susie. Susie Killerhouse.org. Thank you very much. W hey, Gary, or somebody, could you put www.killerhouse.org? And I will be sure to pin that comment. Effective. It keeps freezing. Does it still keep freezing? Hello from Michigan, Alberta, Canada. God bless you. How are you guys doing in Alberta, Canada? We're not going to make this political, but God bless you. I was talking to Brent. He said he just had his home inspected for mold. Ah. We'll follow up with Brother it Brent. It doesn't look good. Okay, we'll follow up with you. You remember Brent, right? I do. I've recently been in communication with him. Yes. Good. Well, we wanted to talk to you today. I wanted to bring Rocco... In so that you could get his perspective because you've heard from me about my experience and how sick I got. I had four different types of mold in my bloodstream, also diagnosed with having pre-emphysema, and I don't smoke. And not only that, we lost our house and we lost all of the belongings in it. So I wanted to talk to you about that and I wanted to get, Rocco, your perspective on what actually, what are some of the things that you were feeling when you first got sick? Uh, well, this thing that happened in my eye. I had surgery on my eye when I was 15, and they said it was a growth called a pterygium. And it basically just started as like a discoloration. Uh, I remember being in like third grade, and they were like, are you smoking? I was like, dude, I'm not smoking, I'm in third grade. Uh, but it would be really intense allergies, and then it got more and more red, and then they said it was growing into my cornea, and if I didn't get surgery, that it could lead to me literally losing sight in that eye. Um, almost like, a, a, what do they call Cataracts, but I was like nine years old. Um, and they said that it was potentially caused by being in an environment that was so uh, hi highly concentrated with this type of black mold called Stachybotrys. So that, I think also, just like intense allergies, I had you know, chronic sinus infections for a long time, um, which I think a lot of young kids did because we, were, we had a lot of chemicals getting introduced into foods and products in the 90s um, in ways that generations prior didn't really because the Industrial Revolution led to the Chemical Revolution, and it was really about uh, amplifying and extending the... Uh, uh, how long something could last on a shelf in a store. Preservatives, yeah. How, how long it you know, helped the, the food last on the shelf, but not how long it helped you last as a human life. So I think this um, was a factor. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, probably sinus, chronic sinus infections and then also my eye was two main things. So Kevin is asking, Rocco, how do you feel today and how are your allergies? Allergies, well, Asthma. if you Google Waco, Texas, apparently Waco, Texas is the first, fifth worst place in America for allergies. So, 
Yeah, uh, we other, didn't know that before we moved here, but your asthma is gone. Asthma is gone. Yeah, the asthma was very temporary, I think, when it got most intense. And then uh, also skin, I think I had like psoriasis of some sort as a, as a teenager. Um, but all things are great, all healed and cleaned up. You know, I didn't think about that pterygium that you had in your eye. I'm writing a book about that is going to go along with killerhouse.org with our documentary and I'm going to definitely include that because that you know what happens is when you get all these different side effects like I had debilitating migraines I don't get them anymore and you don't always say you know a lot of doctors I went to dozens of doctors you once said that it was like going on tour with your dad well in the documentary you say going on tour with him for music going on tour with you for doctors yeah but you don't often think like, okay, if you break your arm and you go to the hospital, obviously there's a bone protruding from your skin, your arm is broken. But a lot of these little things that don't seem like little things at the time, but migraines, headaches, sore throat, asthma, upper respiratory, uh, chronic sinus infections, heart palpitations, skin diseases, should I go on and on? A lot of those things aren't something that would send you to the emergency room right away, but compounded when you look back, I mean, obviously you feel better now being out of the house. Yeah, the, I think you're pointing at the residuals, the residual effect that kind of adds and adds and adds, and then it gets to the point where it's like the, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you recall about being in the house? The red front door, um, zebra patterns everywhere. Mm. Um, zebra carpeting. Uh, yeah, it just, just felt like zebra. Oh yeah, in the basement, this, there's a zebra. The whole carpet was zebra. Um, I remember we had it felt like we had just refurbished the kitchen. Yeah, just redid we had a like gorgeous kitchen. Several things, and then it felt like we just. And the living room. We had knocked out a wall that was like dad's office was next to the living room. And then we reoriented everything in the living room because the TV used to be the wooden box kind of TV. And then we put a new, it was 2000, I think it was 1999. It was a flat screen TV. And I remember thinking, we're in the future now. <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, they were like, yeah, you can't stay in the house anymore. And I remember being like, well, why would we just do all that? Why would we just right. fix all this stuff if now we can't even be here anymore? And you remember going to the Holiday Inn and... I do. We, we also stayed in a fifth wheeler, fifth wheel on our property, on our driveway in front of the house when we were filming the MTV show Surviving Nugent mm -hmm. and we couldn't go in the house. But we had already signed a contract to film on the property, so we had to be there. And we put up, we lived in that fifth wheel. Do you remember that? I remember that also being like a breadcrumb lead up to my teenage identity crisis because it was a moment where it was like there was literally a huge production company in our home, around our home, 50 plus people every day for like, felt like a month or so, um, filming this thing, but we weren't even in our house, but we were pretending like we were living yeah. in our house. Yeah. And I think that started to confuse me as to like, the difference in, uh, here's who we project ourselves to be as a family, and um, our identity exported as products in the world, versus what's actually happening to us in our world, in our, in our private life. I remember starting to feel like, you know, as a kid, it was just a lot to navigate. Um, I didn't, I obviously couldn't articulate everything I'm saying now back then, but I remember just, it was confusing. I was like, wait, well, I can't go in my own room. I remember having, in the fifth wheel, I remember having my Game Boy and not having all my Pokemon cards and all my games. And then this doctor dude was like, you guys got to stop taking stuff from the house. Yeah. And I was like, well, I got to get my video games at least. If I had to leave right now, I'm going to grab Pokemon and video games. And then I think I'll be okay. But you, you didn't, did you? I did. You did? I think you I, snuck it out and you didn't tell me? Well, something I probably never even spoken out loud to you uh -oh. is my last trip into the house. Mm. I remember it. It was like a... 
I think I just saw someone talking about nightmares. Like, yeah, I've had this actually as a, a dream more than one time across the years. I didn't know it was my last time that I was ever going to go into that house. But I remember going to the bathroom. I remember everything just feeling like a slow motion dream. I mean, I must have been nine or ten at that point. Do you remember the exact date? It was like our last days at the house. That would be cool to know. Yeah, I will find that out. Because my birthday's in July, and if this was in 1999 or 2000, then I was either, if it was the first half of the year, I was either either nine or ten. But yeah, I remember going into the house, and you said, you know, it's funny, now we're talking about masks and stuff. I know. But I remember going in the house, and you were like, don't breathe too much. I was like... (gasps) Don't inhale. Yeah. I'm going to try to grab all the things that I wanted. I remember Bunky. You remember Bunky? I do remember Bunky. I had a (laughs) teddy bear that my sister Sasha had Hmm. passed along to me. And um, I remember grabbing Bunky, and I remember grabbing a couple Game Boy cartridges. Not many things. I mean, I I just grabbed a couple things. It was like the last time I was ever in that house, and now it's just dirt. And there's a documentary, which... We just, I just recently saw that footage for the first time of the actual mm. destruction. That was... It's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful, yeah. We just found the, the footage of the bulldozer actually taking the bulldozer claw into the side of the house and pulling it away. And so that is in the documentary. If you go to killerhouse.org, you can watch it. You can download it. You can share it. My goal is to help people recognize there's there's a problem like brent mccain was there and i've seen a couple of people comment that they were at the premiere on last saturday a week ago tomorrow in waco texas and there were a lot of people who it was an emotional thing too i mean there was a point where i couldn't answer a question from one of the people because it just it hit home with me i mean we lost Lost everything. So but more more than losing physical material, worldly possessions, losing your internal well being mm-hmm. and that having a connection to an actual physical place, I think connecting to somebody else I remember I remember that moment in the the audience, that lady asked you the question about even not even being able to work out. You know, mm-hmm. she can't work out because her immune system isn't, you know, whatever status that it's she can't work out. Um, and yeah, I think it's emotional because it's, it's like our soul, our spirit knows that it's somehow connected to our growth, but then our mind doesn't understand why it's happening. So we feel debilitated or disempowered or uh, I think this is also connected to the brain fog that's often discussed on this topic is what, where is the source of the issue? It's kind of like foggy even in understanding like what am I supposed to do? Walk away from my home? Where is the issue that's happening in my health? Is it in my home? Is it in my mind? Is it in my my food? It's it's kind of like a murky water situation. So, um, yeah. It's hard to to grasp now. It seems like we've had so many years. It's eighteen years now since this all happened. Since we've been away from the house and been able to get healthy, but there still feels like times for me anyway. And I know too, you have this that you're just trying to keep your head above water, whether it's, you know, you get run down, you get stressed, you get exposed to other toxins, other allergens, and you're fighting to, to stay well. So it never really, you never really fully recover, I don't think. Well, this is a great question is how do you get better? I mm-hmm. think you have to detoxify the body and then detoxify the environment. Well, maybe not in that order, because the the scary thing is, I think that's why this is a call, it's called Killer House. Mm-hmm. And the the cover art looks kind of like it's a horror film. Which, you know, what if the enemy for your well being was the very walls that you called home? That is kind of a, a scary yeah. situation. But how do you get better? I think it's it leads people on this journey called the wellness path or. Uh, detox but not detox like you're addicted to drugs and stuff it's like detox just because your your nervous system has now become unconsciously addicted to these uh, really malicious microtoxins molecular viruses funny that that's happening now in a bigger way but Mm -hmm. to detox the body is to uh, the food elimination diet mentioned that as a possible way 
there's a there's a several different things that you could do and it's different for every person number one changing your diet um, number two you have to if it's really bad and the only way you know if it's really bad is to get your house tested to have independent testing done but like you said to detox and there's a lot of things that I did and coming soon on killerhouse.org if you sign up if you click on the link to get more information to email you with updates in the coming weeks next couple of weeks I'm going to have hours and hours of interviews that I've done with doctors and lawyers and other people who have been sickened by toxic mold and also worksheets and checklists that you can do because it is different for every single person. Every single person gets affected differently. Since I was in the home more than you and dad, I got the sickest. But you're, you could have you know, a husband and wife in the home, the same home, one gets sicker than the other because of a genetic predisposition and those are things that we have just found out back when this happened to us in 2001 2002 nobody was talking about it there was the melinda ballard case that she had a big huge mansion in texas and they tried to make it look like the dallas tv show and she was ripping off the insurance company but what people who really did their research would find is that she and her husband and her family all got deathly ill and eventually they passed away from this and in the documentary if you go to killerhouse.org killerhouse.org you can see that i had put in there's information about Brittany murphy the actress Brittany murphy in her home she and her husband simon knew they had mold they went to the builder and they said we gotta we gotta fix this we have toxic mold well what happens is a series of things she eventually at 32 years of age died from pneumonia now that's one of those things like the broken arm thing like well you know she died from pneumonia people get pneumonia and die that's true but do 32 year olds die from pneumonia and then five months later her 40 year old husband simon died of pneumonia as well so pneumonia can be one of those symptoms that you could get from toxic mold exposure. I think it's a great comment. Why aren't there stronger regulations on these products? That's part of the mission, in the wind in your sail in this yeah. as, a, as a mission statement because there aren't uh, mass, there's no mass awareness about this as an issue because it's all, it's all based on people wanting to make money. They don't think about the impact that it has on your health. So the things that have chemicals in them, the things that are super toxic if you, you know, uh, saw this saw this little like little logo thing on the back of a product recently and it's like the most bizarre thing because you're like why would i i wouldn't eat this it says like do not put in your mouth and it's like something for a car oil or something like that do not ingest so there's like moments like that where we as consumers of products see this and we're like duh but there's moments in products that they're hiding from us and they're, yep. they're on you know shelves in stores and um there are people getting away there are companies getting away with putting really toxic really harmful chemicals and products uh into these things that they're selling us and that's part of our, our mission here is bring awareness to that yeah just to wake people up about the air quality in your home gary ackerman says uh, water with a ton of chemicals coming in our home at camp lejeune back in the 60s and 70s and a friend of mine christina bear is helping military uh, soldiers in hawaii where their homes have been contaminated with jet fuel in the water and you know if you you know you're filling up your gas tank with with gas you're at the gas station and you know a little bit of gas sprinkles out and it gets on your clothes you get in the car you smell that all day long so the problem is even if they cleaned up the water it's in their home so there's so much to be done the other comment says what can we do about it we have to educate people number one you have to speak out about it we have to talk with the insurance companies they have to offer people more uh, more funding because now if you have a water leak typically check your homeowner's insurance you only get ten thousand dollars that doesn't pay for your house that hardly, hardly pays for anything these days but also the building construction industry we are not building homes like we used to the products and materials that we use are are not quality materials anymore and they 
you know, throw a house together. They don't take precautions that they should. So that's a that's a big problem as well. I'd be interested mm-hmm. in knowing if there's this type of issue or this level of the issue in other countries um, mm. around, you know, homes being built so cheaply and such incredible levels of toxic chemicals being introduced into products. I'm sure there are, but it, for me, it, ma- it makes me think about um, this time where we were in Europe or something and we were talking about the architecture. It was just considerably more appealing to look at than being in America. And I pointed at it because I was a kid and I was, you know, wide-eyed and way before I knew what a prefabbed home was. But now you'd see any, you know, any state, any city across America, there's huge subdivisions and almost every home is literally just like a mirror replica. Yeah. And it's, or maybe there's some variations, but uh, I feel like that whole kind of model of the, uh, you know, preset, just take it, preset, just take it. It, lo- it, it disconnected us from the process of really being um, champions of high quality materials and uh, I think this is, it gets into a deeper conversation about sustainability and how what we're adding to the world is affecting the world and in our environment. Well, when we were researching how to build a green home, if you look at the products in a, a green home, they're prefab products, they're recycled, oftentimes using toxic products to mold into drywall and things like that. But remember when we went to London, that was one of the first times that we felt better. And we're like, wait a minute, London, it's constantly rainy. Why do we feel better in this climate? It's because the homes, the buildings were constructed with higher quality materials. A long time ago, they didn't use some of the the cheap products that we use these days in, in constructing homes. But that was one of the first indicators that, wait a minute, why do we feel better there? Why do we sleep great? Something is wrong with our house. Corner cutting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, Ronald asks, can you remove mold from your clothing and home furniture? The problem is one mold spore is one one hundredth the size of human hair, and its natural defense mechanism is to propagate a million times. That's why we had to leave everything at our home, because at the time we were so sick nowadays you might be able to get things cleaned but then you have to look at what toxic chemicals they use for dry cleaning and things it's it's not worth it when you get as sick as we got we made the decision that our we can't take a chance with our health we can't take a chance that one of those microscopic mold spores what happened is that it got it had gotten into the ductwork, so it was everywhere. And nowadays, like there's you you talk about having a porous substance, which could be material, wood, uh, the drywall, or sheetrock, as they call it in Texas, and carpeting. And those mold spores can be everywhere. So let's say you get your house cleaned, and you still have you had stachybotrys, know thy name, stachybotrys mold, know that name. If you have stachybotrys mold and, and say you have the whole house cleaned and it was done right and everything, but you kept your favorite rug, you kept a rug, and you just you had to keep that rug. Moved back into the house, you got that, maybe a, a couple months go by and you start getting migraines again. You start getting a, a stuffy nose, you start getting a sore throat, you start getting, you know, chronic fatigue. That's the cause of this. So if you really want to feel better, get rid of like we just built a house we don't have carpeting we have rugs placed in strategic areas but you we also had to use no voc which is volatile organic compounds no voc paint not low voc paint and really had to keep our eye on everything that was being done essential oils yes um do not use downy fabric softener. Do not use downy fabric softener. Do not use chemically scented candles. Uh, you, yeah, Pookie Martinez. I love that name. No laundry detergent is Mountain Fresh. No. It's interesting, isn't it, that they don't put the ingredients on 
laundry detergent. You can't, if you go to look, you pick up a, you know, a jug, which is a plastic jug of laundry detergent. You try to find the ingredients, it's not listed. So go to the website and look at those ingredients, then look up the side effect of those ingredients. It's no Mountain Fresh. That's, those are toxic chemicals. I remember the first time uh, when you were in eight, eighth grade, when were you in eighth grade at, at uh, Crawford? 2011 or 2002? No, I'm sorry, yeah, 2002. So we were just getting better, but at that point I changed our diet and I remember to, to eliminate preservatives and what Rocco was talking about earlier. If it's in a box on a shelf for months or even years, is that good fuel for your body? Is that good nutrition? Eat more God food, not man food. And I remember you called and you said, can I stay after to watch a track meet? after school to watch a track meet. And I said, well, what are you going to have for dinner? Do you remember? I just have a hot dog from the concession stand. I, I literally was like, a, a hot dog? Do you know what's in a hot dog? Here I'm trying to have a conversation. Not to freak him out, but there's that balance that you, yes, David Hall says, I have so many questions. We have a lot of answers. We could talk about this forever. We've already been talking about this for 25 minutes. That's why go to killerhouse.org if you click on the banner. And then also, oh. share. we will share a list of all the products yes. to be aware of that are healthy, that are helpful, and then products that are not helpful. But all of this go is to available this one. on, oh yeah, by the way, all of this is available on killerhouse. Nope, oh. keep going. Keep, no, oh, scroll. Down, down, down. Oh, there we go. Killerhouse.org. Yes, try to drink out of glass. Like we have filtered water in our home. The more you, I mean, if you think about it, a plastic water bottle, most here in Texas, it's we have 100 days of 100 degrees. And if you drive by, you know, some gas, gas stations, they'll have uh, the flats of water bottles sitting outside cooking in the sun. Well, have you ever like accidentally, you know, had a plastic something or other near a burner on your stove or a curling iron or something like that? It will melt. So what happens is those toxic chemicals in the plastic water bottle will melt into the liquid, your Cokes, your Gatorades, your whatever, your water, and you're drinking those toxic chemicals. So that's why we don't we don't do that. We try to back it down. We live our life now, 80, I call it 80-20. 80% of what we do is clean and healthy. Yes, you know, we're going to have chips here and there, you know, guacamole and chips and salsa and things like that. But I, I do believe it's important to live life to the fullest, but also just be cautious about everything. All right, guys, we could continue to talk about this for a long time and we will we're going to have so much more information if you go to killerhouse.org killerhouse.org you can do, do the last time say last killerhouse.org what's that you've always been really good at uh, uh, different um dialects what what is a because of your acting background mm. do you have an accent that you could say killerhouse.org and uh not to put you on the spot right, or anything. Right. Well, I'll, uh, um, I've been watching Game of Thrones lately, so some of it has a bit of Scottish and Scottish and Irish and uh, Old English. You go to killerhouse.org and uh, find what you need to there. Say that, say that again. Killerhouse.org. <laughs> I'm a free... So I don't know if that's appropriate. <laughs> Someone might send me an email. Oh, oh, did you see that? No, I'm not going to do that one, Joseph. No, we're not going to do We're going to keep this. I don't know, yeah, how, to, I don't know yeah. how to do that. All right, guys. Go to killerhouse.org. Watch the documentary. You can rent it or download it. And please share it with people. We will have more information coming soon. So make sure you click on that link to get notified when we do. Have a great day. Make it a great day. Do something healthy and happy for you today. Do you know how to do the wave with me? Ready? No, other way. <laughs>